Hello Internet, Seth Skorakowski, and it has been way too long since I did one of my War Story videos, so it is time that we go ahead and correct that. And this is what we like to call the Great Skateboard Race, or the Bonsai of Death. And it's one of those stories that happens when you simply let your players decide what sort of mischief it is that they want to get into and just see what happens and let them go. And it often ends up being a lot more exciting and memorable than anything a game master could have possibly planned. Okay, so let's rewind time a bit, it is 2012 and we're playing Cyberpunk 2020. In this campaign I've mentioned before in a couple other videos, it was a, a gutter punk campaign or the kids campaign that we called it. So we moved the timeline from Cyberpunk 2020 up to 2050 because 2020 was just a little bit too close and you know, now that's aren't past us. So we were using this mod called Interlock Unlimited and that adds a bunch of house rules to the system. In fact, I was so involved in the Interlock Unlimited project at the time that I'm listed as one of the contributors, making this my very first RPG credit, as well as my revamping of the drug lab rules because street drugs were a huge part of that campaign. Among the rules in IU was playing children, and the campaign concept that we had was that they were going to play these characters in the years leading up to them turning 18 once it hits 2050, and they all belonged to this juvie street gang which they named the Ice Scorpions, and they all started out as these 12 year olds, the newest and youngest members of this gang, and every adventure was set several months after the adventure before it, you know, so as the campaign progressed, the characters were growing up and their stats were improving, you know, eventually becoming really the oldest and the leaders of this gang. So for this I took one of the neighborhood maps of the old Night City book and I photoshopped it up a bit, and this map was our entire world. They only rarely left this neighborhood during the whole campaign, and it was called the Cloverdale District. We even had a large printed out version of this that we'd set on the table that we used during our games. The concept is that this neighborhood was just south of downtown Night City, and the combat zone was encroaching closer and closer every year, so this neighborhood was becoming more and more violent and you know, more and more businesses were closing each year, and eventually the combat zone would consume this by 2050. Just prior to the campaign start there was a school that all the player characters attended, but that school had closed down. So all these gangers were homeless and they were squatting in the various buildings around the neighborhood. Several other gangs operated in this area, and with every time jump we redrew their territories as some gangs grew and others shrank and new ones moved in, and some of those gangs would eventually get absorbed into some of Night City's more notorious gangs, such as uh, the Gangsta Pranksters from my neighborhood eventually folded into the Bozos from the normal cyberpunk universe. Now the first few adventures they were pretty innocent things, you know, petty thefts, shoplifting food, you know, maybe rolling a guy and getting his cash, but it was several sessions before any of the player characters got their first gun, and it was this piece of crap plastic pistol with the bullets already molded in. Now eventually the campaign would escalate to becoming full on machine gun fights, and with them running this small drug empire, but at first it was more switchblades and homemade weapons and innocent pranks. It was an amazing campaign, I consider it the best campaign that I've ever run, and with the exception of them once going to the adjoining neighborhood for one adventure and another where they headed into Night City proper to see a Johnny Silverhand concert, they never ever left this tiny neighborhood, so it's kind of like, you know, take that to all the people that say you have to have a, a large world in order to do a campaign. We just did it in a 3x4 block area. Now one feature in this neighborhood was the Cloverdale Mallplex, which in Cyberpunk 2020 mallplexes are these massive shopping malls, but also have apartments, business offices, and they have their own schools inside of them. This is like a little arcology, a city within a city. And the Cloverdale Mallplex even housed its own gangs that only existed inside the confines of this mall. I could go on and on for hours about this campaign, but for the purpose of this story, this is all the information that you need. So anyway. So we're playing a session one day, the player characters had just finished up their job, they'd uh, just witnessed their friendly neighborhood police officer get gunned down by some bank robbers in an abandoned building, you know, just like with Robocop if there was also a bunch of kids that were secretly hiding behind a bunch of crates watching the whole thing. And that NPC cop would later return as an emotionless Borg later on in the campaign. But the planned portion of the session had ended pretty early. Dude, that was an awesome game, Thethan. Yeah, I hope Sergeant Sloan's gonna be okay. Well, it looks like you'll have to wait and see, but guys, we did this adventure really fast today, and we've got another hour before our usual stop time. Oh damn, looks like I'm going to be getting home at a decent time tonight. Wife's well, going to be happy about that. So what do you guys want to do? Hmm. We could, uh... Huh. You know what I always wanted to do as a kid? Skateboard through a mall, like a race. Oh hell yes. That could be a fun way to end the session. 
so the plan was a race on all six levels of this mall, and style was just as important as speed, so the racers were encouraged to do tricks and pull off stunts as they went. Two player characters chose to join this race, as did one of the NPC gang members, and the rest of the gang was going to watch all this, they were going to videotape it, as well as run interference in any security guards, and go ahead and use that distraction of the race to go ahead and rob some of the stores. On the bottom floor is an ice skating rink, and one of the older kids says that he'll throw in a six pack of smash to the first kid that skates across that at the very end, but that's really just optional for the race. No way dude, that is not optional. Hot Sauce is going to get that six pack. Only after I get it first. The race started off great, and the player characters each had to lap one of the levels above the skating ring before going down to the floor below it. And so we're improvising the hell out of this scene, and I'm throwing in obstacles and features along each floor, and the characters are all pulling the crazier and crazier stunts trying to one-up each other, while also failing the occasional roll and busting their ass. It was awesome. Meanwhile, the shoppers are all freaking out at all this commotion going on, and the members of the Malplex gang they're trying to attack the PCs, while security is also chasing them down, and the other characters and friendly NPCs are knocking all the security guards out of the way and making sure that none of the racers get pinched by the law. It was on the fourth floor of the building when one of the players asked, What is that? Uh, just a kiosk with some stuff on it. What all does it have? Uh, it was at this moment that my brain froze. I've been running a session for the last seven hours at this point, and I'm trying to do an on-the-fly design of a six-story small with all kinds of stuff going on and a lot of moving parts, and now I've got a player asking me what in the hell is it a stupid kiosk in a mall? It's like, I don't know, man, mall stuff? So I blurted out the first random thing that came to mind. Bonsai trees. Bonsai trees? Yeah, it's got all these little pots with these genetically engineered little small trees in them, and they're really, really popular this year. Okay, then as I skate past it, I'm going to reach out and grab one of those bonsai trees. So the player made the roll and snagged himself a little bonsai tree. Okay, then I'm just going to toss it right over that rail without even looking. Roll a d10, and on a 1, you're going to hit somebody in the skating rink below. I got a 1. Okay, well, roll the damage location to see where you hit him with a bonsai tree. Now, in the old edition of Cyberpunk, there were hit locations, and a roll of a 1 meant that it was a headshot. Ooh, I hit him in the head! Oh, well, that's gonna hurt. Now, I have no freaking idea how to calculate the damage that a potted plant that's dropped from the fourth floor of a mall should possibly do, so I just asked for 2d6. Maximum damage. In Cyberpunk 2020, a headshot doubles damage, so bringing that 12 points up to 24 points, and no character, no matter how tough they were, could possibly survive that. Dude, you smashed their skull in. Ha <laughs> ha, whoops! Now roll to see how old they were. Ha, <laughs> what? I don't know what it was we rolled to determine this, but I do remember what the result was. They were 14 years old. Aw, oh, damn, brother, you killed a kid. Yeah, but Hot Sauce is a kid too, so that's like... less bad? Hold up. Have our characters even killed anyone in this campaign before? No, none of us have killed anyone before. Brother, you popped your murder cherry with a bonsai tree. <laughs> What's worse is that Hot Sauce has no idea because he didn't even look when he threw it. So with the killing of an innocent bystander, the security guards really upped their game all of a sudden, and the real guns came out. So by the time they could really organize themselves in order to stop these rampaging gangers that are skateboarding through the mall, the punks were done with the race, and they got their asses out of there, and none of them actually ended up getting that six-pack of smash. It was an amazing end to the session, and despite it getting horrifically dark at one moment, we laughed our butts off during this thing. However, the original plan of trying to wrap this game up by a reasonable time, yeah, that went completely out the window. Aw, oh, damn, how is it 2 o'clock in the morning? So much for getting home early. After the session, I decided to summarize all the session's events into a scream sheet, these little single-page newspapers that appear in the cyberpunk universe, and it detailed the race itself as well as the other events from that session, and it was a hit with my players and became a regular thing that I did after several sessions, and showing the different news stories, some that were related to the adventure they just completed, while others were just stories about the world in general. Unfortunately, evidently I didn't save all of those things because I have numbers 1, 2, 3, and 5, and I think there were six or seven scream sheets in total, so I'm missing a few of them, which it probably serves me right for that because I was making those while I was at work and sending them out on my work email, and therefore I can't get access to them anymore. Let that be a lesson to you. 
But these are fun little artifacts to go back and read through now. Now, one interesting thing, or at least I think it's pretty interesting, maybe somebody else out there will, is in my video about the Scott Brown incident, I mentioned that I used a Scott Brown agent in one of our games that was in this campaign. And I have a scream sheet where they're interviewing the agent about that incident, as well as a story about the runaway kid that had joined their gang but ended up getting snagged by a bunch of edge runners and sent back to a school that he'd run away from, which is a really fun way of telling the player characters what ended up happening with that NPC. Then another scream sheet has a four Thor reference in it, meaning that these four scream sheets now reference three separate war stories. Anyway, that is it for this video. I suppose if this story has a moral to it, because stories I guess are supposed to have morals, it would be how the most memorable parts of games really end up being the part of the adventure that no one could have planned for. Those parts where you just let the players go and get themselves into trouble. That, and that you shouldn't throw things off of fourth floor balconies. That's, that's also true. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews, how to's, or more tabletop war stories, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, amigos, y'all have a great day. You know, you've been saying for years now you were going to buy that one player a bonsai tree for Christmas to kind of commemorate that occasion, and uh, it's been 10 years, it's going to be 11 years this coming Christmas, and uh, you gotten around to that yet? Uh, not yet. I haven't gotten around to it, but I promise I'll do it right after I paint that hook horror miniature.